In this lesson, I want to talk with you about a problem you will run into if you work with noises and animations. For this, I have my scene back where I have a static noise here as a displacer on my grid. And what I want to do now is I want to start animating this grid here. So I use a transform node for that after the grid. And I set the display flag for a moment to the transform. And what I want is I want to rotate the grid over time. So for this, I go here, make a real time so that it doesn't run faster than real time. And then we go here to the rotate Y. And I use the dollar $t for time. And I think it's a little bit too slow. Maybe multiply this by five. And if we now press play, you see, yeah, now all the points are rotating because we have now this rotation and transform. If we now check this with the help of the noise, you will have a really interesting result. You will see that all the points are now moving, but the noise pattern itself sticks in space. You remember that I told you that a noise is a noise field? which is represented in space. And all our noise calculations we do are using the positions of the points, but the noise field itself is in space. And that's exactly the problem we see here. So as long as we use these moving positions here, our noise has the problem. So how to do that now better? Hmm. We need a position here which we can freeze. And to freeze a position, we use a rest node. So let's use a rest position node and also open up a geometry spreadsheet so that you can see what happens. So first I start here. After the grid, I add a rest node here. And you will see that the rest node now delivers you a copy of the position for every point with the name rest. That's cool. But be aware that the position of the rest node in this setup here has to be before the animation. So if you go here now and you now change here the time indicator, you see that the rest position and the position of the points change at the same time. So you have to freeze. And for this, you need to place the rest first here. There's a second way, which I show you in a moment. Okay. We can now rotate our grid. And the positions here of the points are changing, but not the rest positions of the points. So the only change we now have to do is we have to go into our setup and don't use the changing positions here of the points, but we want to use the rest. And for this, we need an attribute here inside. And for this, we use the bind node. You remember, I told you with the help of the bind node, you can bring every attribute which you defined outside into the warps. And with the bind export node, you can also bring these attributes back into the stream outside of the warp. So with the bind node here, we have to tell him which attribute we want to have. The name was rest. And if you're not sure, go back to your geometry spreadsheet and read it's rest with low letters and it's a vector x, y, z. So we need for this bind here, the data type vector. And the vector is here built from three floats, so three floats vector. So that's it. Now the rest position is there. And now we can use this rest position for the noise itself. Let's take a look what we have now. And now you see that now this pattern here rotates with your animation 
and it sticks on the surface. Great. I told you that there are two ways of using this rest node here. One way is you use it before the animation, but there's a second use. So if you have another rest position and we bypass this here for a moment, and you want to place it somewhere here because you suddenly see that you need it, you have here the second input and if you go over the second input you see that you have here rest position. That means you add the object which has the rest positions and in our case this is the grid. So you hook up this port here with the grid and this port here is named deforming then and it's absolutely the same so if you now look at that here you see you get the same result.